What's going on, world? It's your boy at Big Game James underscore 36, and I'm here with Greg McGarity. And this is the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl Drive to Selection Show presented by Toyota. Each and every week, we come to you, talk about the previous weekend and what's going on ahead for the college football season and how it affects the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl played here December 29th at noon in at Jacksonville, Florida. Um, this past weekend, holiday season's kicked off. Football season is starting to slowly come to an end. And much like Thanksgiving dinner, a lot of rivalries, a lot of family feuds, a lot of things came on. It was actually, for what I thought would be not as exciting because some of the rivalries are lopsided, it actually t turned out to be a pretty good weekend for college football. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> it really was. I mean, some games that came down to the wire and uh, just a full day of activity that was really, really fun to watch. And it's what makes college football so special. It definitely does. I mean, you saw... Tons of um, tons of matchups in the ACC and the SEC that have bad blood, bragging rights, a lot of talk, a lot of trash talking. Yeah. But as we always, as we've said all year, college football has this weird way of working itself out. So a lot of controversy, a lot of people wondering how will the Final Four shape out. There was an opportunity to make it worse. But it typically right now, it kind of leads up into a pretty um, epic championship weekend. Um, let's go over the SEC first. What were some of the games that kind of affected it? And what were some of your thoughts about the Clemson, South Carolina, um, yeah. Georgia, um, Georgia, Georgia Tech, different things like that? Well, I was looking at it from a viewpoint of who could be bowl eligible and the teams that had a chance to become bowl eligible. Florida, Mississippi State, South Carolina all lost. Mm -hmm. So um, those games are, are just, just like Auburn, Alabama. I mean, who could have ever predicted that to turn out the way it did? And Florida hung with Florida State for a little bit, but Florida State showed its will in the second half. And, you know, Ole Miss-Mississippi State game was kind of ugly, but Ole Miss found a way to win. Uh, Kentucky's win over Louisville was probably maybe the most surprising game that weekend. And Georgia Tech's played a great game, and uh, certainly that was – a lot more competitive than people thought. But that's the value of these rivalry games. It's just, uh, especially when the home team is, is maybe not favored to win, I think you see the, the level of play for those teams uh, be elevated due to the underdog role. I think people tend to under, or underestimate the, the will of, of, of man. Like when you're coming in there, these are growing, they're not grown, grown men, but these are. These are grown yeah, men. Yeah. They, I mean, they, got, they have pride. They I always tell people they were recruited too. Absolutely. And they don't want to just go out there and get pummeled for 60 minutes. So if you don't take, if you take them lightly, they can come out there and they can get you a victory and I mean, get a victory off of you. And some of these guys actually did. The Auburn Alabama game, I just knew Auburn had upset Alabama. And I was just like, okay. Next weekend is going to be chaos when Bama comes in and tries to upset Georgia. Was it fourth and 31, probably a 35-yard strike into the end zone? What do you say to, like as an athletic director, what do you say to the coach after that? Do you wait a couple days just to speak to him, or do you just be like, hey, man, I know you're new, but you got to get, you, you can't let that happen. Well, I think the first reaction is to, is to be in the locker room as an athletic director when you lose. It's pretty easy when you win, but... You know, a coach wants uh, uh, their leader to be in the room with them to support them, and I'm sure that's the way that uh, John responded uh, when Coach Freeze suffered that uh, that devastating loss. But you certainly don't deal with it that night. You let the you sort of let the uh, kind of like the 24 or 48 hour rule, and you might just ask a probing question: Is what was your thought going into that, that last play defensively? Because everybody's uh, always wondering about why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's just an educational process, and if you've got a strong relationship with your head coach, there shouldn't be any problems asking any question. But that's not the time to do it after a loss like that, because I'm sure the Auburn AD was in the jar too after that game. Yeah, it's tough. One of the things I've always heard in all my years of football, the only thing prevent does is prevent you from winning. <laughs> And it was just, I, I, I have my questions. Why send two, yeah. need to send three, too much time. But, hey, still a, still a great win. Yep. The only people who are truly, truly upset are Auburn fans and people who bet money in yep. Vegas and thought that they were going to, thought they had a winner there. Right. Um, Georgia, Georgia Tech, um, 
came down to now. I didn't watch it, but is, did did Georgia have to kick an onside kick and recover, or did Georgia Tech almost get the onside kick? Yeah, Tech was coming back, and the job that uh, Coach Key did there, and and it was odd. Coach Key played at Tech, and Kirby played at Georgia. Mm. So you had two guys that totally knew everything about that rivalry, and Tech just Tech Tech was superb that night. They just came up short. Uh, Georgia kind of showed its will when they really had to in that last possession. But I think it was one of these games, again, to where you throw the point spread out and you've got two teams that, you know, they, they live 70 miles apart, different conferences, but a lot of these young people know each other. They've grown up with them. So to your point, as far as the pride factor kicks in, and I think it makes a huge difference in, in those kind of games. A wise man once told me, told me that over the course of 12 games, you're going to have two games you need to pray. <laughs> You're going to have three, um, three games where everything's going to click. And then I believe it was, was that seven, seven games where everything's just going to go perfect. And it seems like over the holidays, this was a praying time, a, th a season yeah. of thanks. Because even out west, you had Washington playing Washington State. Yeah. Washington State wanted to be bowl eligible. Mm -hmm. It came down to um, a field goal. And I think a lot of people don't understand, and maybe this can, we haven't really talked about this, but how important it is to go to a bowl game. When I was growing up, I never really went out of the state, outside of New Jersey where my family was from, but if it wasn't New Jersey, it was Tallahassee or Orlando. That was our traveling. I got to see New Orleans for the first time. I literally would go to Orlando or somewhere and never been to Jacksonville. My first time experience Jacksonville was a bowl game. It was fun. It was gifts. I think we're so used to championships right. that we oh, neglect. So what is the importance of like being bowl eligible? Like, What does that mean to a program? Well, the biggest thing, it means you can continue to practice. Uh, you have 15 opportunities to practice before that bowl game. And unless you're playing for the championship, I think a lot of these teams, of course, they want to win that year, but they're really looking to prepare themselves for next year. Mm. So this is fixed 15 extra days that the coaches get to have tape on these young people that have to emerge next year, whether it's a quarterback that's going to play next year. Uh, you have an opportunity uh, to evaluate that, and you really have the ab ab ability to evaluate it on game day, mm. you know, when the chips are on the table. So I think that's part of it, but it also creates an activity for these kids to bond, continue their relationships in a wonderful environment. For instance, at our game, uh, they get to hang out for four or five days at the Omni to Me Island or at the Marriott Sawgrass in two five-star world-class areas and resorts. And so that's the part of it that I think these kids like the most is the ability to come, have some fun, continue to play a game they love, and to be able to compete in an NFL stadium. Which I think is really cool. And again, it's easy for fans of big bases to kind of overlook mm -hmm. this, but a lot of these guys, it's their first time right. really traveling, staying at a nice hotel, and you get to eat. And when you're a kid, that's really, and you get cool gifts. Yep. Um, yep. I remember one of the first, well, we didn't like the, the Sugar Bowl too much because they had to fly us. <laughs> and I got a check for a dollar and 25 cents <laughs> because they have to get you home. Right. You got to get to go home. But now when we played the, the rest of the bowl games in Florida, they figured out some things right. so we could make a little right. bit more money. But going to the ACC, obviously, Clemson, South Carolina, we talked about those mm -hmm. a little bit. Clemson needed to win so that they right. can stay in that premium right. pool. Um, South Carolina needed to win, again, just to be bowl eligible. Yes. Rivalry. Florida State, Florida. Mm -hmm. Florida needed to win in order to be bowl eligible. Right. Florida State needed to win to be able to continue to be bashed by everybody about how they're not good enough to be in the college football playoff. Talk about those two games and how do, the, how do those kind of affect us here with the Gator Bowl? Well, Clemson with eight wins, it kept them in play because NC State beat North Carolina to have nine wins. So you've got <clears throat> two nine-win teams. You've got Notre Dame. You've got NC State with nine. You've got North Carolina with eight and Clemson with eight. So that's basically your premium pool that will populate one of our bowl games here as far or one of the bowl games in that premium pool. So. The ACC will get together and uh, along with the SEC and maybe decide what's the best matchup. But we know that North Carolina cannot go to San Diego mm -hmm. again. We know that Notre Dame cannot come back here. So it kind of narrows the pool down to maybe NC State or North Carolina. 
Um, and with an outside chance, Clemson, but you just don't know how it works because we have to remember if there's a Big Ten team playing in the Orange Bowl, then the Relia Quest Bowl in Tampa gets to pick first. So who would they pick out of those four teams? We don't know. But once that pick is made, then you've got to match things together as far as repeat games. Uh, for instance, North Carolina State probably could not play Tennessee because they're playing in game two next year. Hmm. I'm not sure the schools would want to do that. Clemson could not play Tennessee because they played in the Orange Bowl last year. So you've got some dynamics there at play. And on the SEC side, Kentucky can't play in Nashville this year. Uh, LSU would be very difficult for them to go back to the Citrus Bowl because they were there last year. So you've got some things at play there that sort of are, are kind of in the weeds that people may not realize that we're, we're certainly abreast of and the conferences are too about possible matchups. So with a guess, have we narrowed it down to maybe three or four teams that we could potentially see on the ACC or the SEC side? Yeah, I think it's one of those uh, North Carolina State, North Carolina Clemson on the flip side for the SEC, Tennessee, LSU, Kentucky in some form or fashion there. So uh, I just think that's the way things are going to play out. And again, we'll have to see what happens uh, this weekend. And we really won't know, really have some clarity until midnight until after the ACC championship game. And then 12 hours later, we'll know at 12 noon on Sunday exactly what's the deal. So a lot of anxious moments here. College football playoff um, rankings came out Tuesday. Um, things kind of went back to what they were before. Um, we have, so I'm looking at this, Georgia, Michigan, Washington, uh, and on uh, Florida State, Ohio State um, bumped down. A little bit, a couple of slots, but again, this weekend you still have Georgia plays Alabama, Florida State plays a, a ranked Louisville team, Michigan plays a ranked <laughs> Iowa team. But right. I mean, yeah. yeah. So everybody's playing in their respective things. But what are your thoughts on the college football playoff? Um, do you feel like the committee got it right, um, or would you see it be played out a different way? Well, so far so good because there's pretty good clarity because you've got you've got four teams that are undefeated in the top four. So if there's no chaos this weekend, you've got your, you've got your top four. Now we'll know Friday night, does chaos begin with Oregon beating Washington? Mm -hmm. I know they're picked to win, but if there's a ton of chaos this week and a lot of upsets, who knows where it's gonna end up because the committee's gonna have to select some teams with one loss, with one loss this year that's gonna have to play up into the national championship, into the final four. So if there's no chaos, it's pretty much done. But if there's some level of chaos where two or three teams in the top four lose, wow, let's wait and see what happens. But it's really gonna be interesting to see how those teams are selected if there's a lot of chaos this weekend. That's why we watch the games. That's the fun. Um, Gator Bowl is pretty much, we, mm -hmm. we're kind of right. set with those, but the rest of the college football landscape it's going to be fun. Again, bowl season is an amazing. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Holiday season, cold weather, good football. Enjoy it. Also, make sure you get your tickets and make sure you have your arrangements set for December 29th at noon, Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, to make sure whoever the two teams we select get supported and get a chance to see exactly how um, Jacksonville is. I'm at Big Game James underscore 36. This is Greg McGarity, and this is the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl Drive to Selection presented by Toyota. We'll see you guys next time. Boom.